Hello my beautiful creatives and welcome back to my art channel. My name is Chrissy B and I'm a creativity coach hoping to inspire you to live a more creative life every day. Now, it is Friday. Happy Friday everyone. I have something a little bit different than I've ever done before on my channel so I'm really excited and a little bit nervous because as you know I really like to experiment in front of you because I like to um, experiment with new things and I like them to be spontaneous so if, if you know, mistakes arise or things happen that I wasn't expecting, then you can see me actually fix it in the moment, just like you would in real life in your own art studio. So what I have done is I had purchased a large sheet of Arches um, paper, some cotton paper from Arches. It is 250 gram. It was 56 centimeters by 76 centimeters, 22 inches by 30 inches. And what I did was I roughly took them down um, just by um, creating a deckle edge. Now I'll do another video while sh where I'll show you exactly how I did that. Um, but I just kind of took it down to a size that I felt would be really manageable for today. So it's about six and three quarters inches long and it is 30 inches wide. Yes. So this is a very, very, very long um, sheet of watercolor paper. So let me tell you what I'm going to do with that. See this? I am going to create something that I'm calling a blessing book. Now I want to send this to somebody in my life who I really care about and she has had a little bit of a rough go the last month and I would really love to send her something that I'm calling a blessings book um, and I'm going to make that blessing book out of this paper. Now this is super simple to do there'll be five inches per page and I'm going to accordion fold this with a bone folder and I'm just going to take a moment and um, measure those out and mark them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically do one, two, three, four, five folds. And I'm gonna do this accordion style, just like you did in elementary school. And the way that I'm gonna do this is, let's move this out of the way. I like to try to write on this as little as possible. And I'm gonna find my line, kind of do my best to kind of fold it down. It's kind of thick paper. Um, I have a bone folder here. And I'm going to just take my bone folder and crease that down, okay? I'm gonna flip the whole thing over and I'm going to fold it the exact same way, actually, because I have an idea. Kind of finesse it into place and then bone folder it down. Burnish it down, bone folder it down, you know, you know what I'm saying, okay? and just keep going until the whole thing is folded. So the reason I did it that way was because I wanted to actually see every line that I had drawn. And doing it that way, I can not only see it, but then I can come back and erase it really quick. And then we'll come back and refold it as an actual accordion fold. So that way it will sit the way that I'm hoping it will sit. I'm gonna just take it again and put it in front of me and I'm just gonna fold it now accordion style. So one away from you, one toward you. One away from you, one toward you. And you do that until the whole um, little blessing book is done. Now, okay, so with all the finagling and futzing that I have done that's gonna be the best, I'm going to get it and I'm gonna have to be okay with that. So don't be like me. Don't put so much pressure on yourself. It's totally fine. So now what I'm gonna do is I have to decide um, how I want to decorate this. I want to decorate both sides. I think this is going to be, this is really nice quality watercolor paper, but I don't know if I want to actually watercolor my pages. However, I did pull out some watercolor. I pulled out my Schmincke watercolor set. And so before I decide colors, let me pull out some stuff so I can decide my color scheme. Because I know who this is for, and I know what colors she enjoys, and I know what colors I enjoy. 
I also know what type of messages I want to tell her in her blessing book. I want this to be something that she can pull out when she's having a hard day. It's kind of like a soul book, but instead of being for yourself, it is for a friend of yours or a loved one or somebody who may not have their own soul book. And really what I'm doing is I'm trying to create a way to remind them who, who they are, who they truly are when life gets crazy. You know, we all know how that feels. Sometimes you just need to hear it from somebody else that everything's gonna be okay. Now that I generally know that my color scheme looks a lot like this one, uh, this one, that one, this is kind of the same thing. Let's see. Just trying to get my color scheme so I can figure out what to paint my background like. do that one like that so let's move my papers to the side and I won't let these ones go too far away because I'd like to be able to see them at least while I'm selecting my watercolor colors so bring back in my schminka and I'm kind of you know I've chosen a lot of green things and I do have this kind of raspberry, pinky kind of color. Mm. You know what? I think I'm gonna do each one just a little bit different, but I need something to tie it all together. So I am gonna do my original thought, which is, now I don't know how this is gonna work because I have never watercolored on this kind of paper before without gessoing it first. So we're going to do a little experiment and see how it goes. If it gets horribly awry, we can always cover it with something, so no worries. Okay, let me just move these kind of up there a little ways. I don't know if you can still see those. You can see those a little bit. And I'm gonna start with, I need to decide which is my front page. I'd like it to, to pull from left to right, like that. Okay, so this one is gonna be the focal point the focal feature. It would be cool if I knew. Well, I need to stay focused here. So let me do what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna take one of these blues, probably this one is the one I'm kind of thinking. I'm gonna take that blue and I'm just gonna kind of put um, kind of a messy, squiggly kind of line down the center of this. The reason I'm doing that is that it could be the unifying color throughout the whole spread. So no matter what we do on each one of the different panels, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, or six pages here, no matter what we do on each of the separate panels, they'll all go together because it has that unifying color on the back end. So let's see how this is going to work. And of course, we're always making the, this up as we go because this is playtime. Even when I'm trying to make someone something for someone else, I find that for me, Things turn out a lot better when I'm playing to do it versus stressing out to do it. Okay, so let me clean some space for myself. Let me get a water bottle out. And I want to do this wet on wet. So I'm gonna kind of flatten my pages out a little bit. And I'm going to I'm gonna have to slide this across because my desk is so small. Let's make sure these are really, really, really out of the way because I don't want to ruin them. Put them up there. And I'm just going to kind of do a wet spray over the entire length of this paper. It doesn't have to be perfect and it doesn't have to be completely saturated. I just want it to be wet because I want my color to run a little bit. So the first thing I'm gonna do is take some of that blue. I'm just gonna touch it down. I want it to run off a little bit. And this might be much lighter than what I was hoping for, but you know what? I like it because um, you can always add more color, but you can't take color away. 
So I'm just gonna kind of do a scribbly kind of mark. Not necessarily down the center, but just down the length of the, I don't know, what I, I've been calling it a blessings book because I want to send my blessings to her even though we're far from each other. I think that would be a fun thing to receive in the mail. Okay. And you know, if you've watched my videos, I do kind of a scribbly little thing. I didn't actually learn that anywhere. I just, I just like it. My hand seems to want to do it. I just let it. Let's just keep going. You see that's kind of going down the center there. Kind of messy, kind of haphazardly. I don't know, I love it. Makes me happy actually. I hope she likes it too. I also like how there are some dark spots and light spots and I just like the variation. Somehow it looks like it might be something that was much harder to do than it actually was. And this is one of the plights of living with two puppies is that I'll end up with dog hair everywhere. <laughs> so if I find I have a dry spot, I just kind of dip my brush and add more water. And it just kind of perks itself back up again. Just kind of scooch this down a little. I'm almost there. So what I need to decide is, do I want to add more color or am I happy with this? Because remember, this will all be in the background. This will all be covered by other like elements and pieces of paper and different decor and things. Things, you know, the things. So there's a part of me that really wants to do one more color into this. Kind of like this was the the main color that I chose, but I kind of want to do a second color as well. And I'm going to choose, I'm looking at all my color, my papers in front of me. I would love to choose a green, I think. And one piece of paper has this kind of minty green to it, which I really, really enjoy. But I'm also looking at this here. And I want to take a green that looks similar to this triangle right there, if you can see that. And that triangle, I think, could be... I'm going to choose that green right there. I know it's really dark, but I think if I use it very um, light-handedly, I think that it could go really well. And you'll see what I mean by that, by light-handedly. So let me add some water to that color. I'll get it juiced up. Let me make sure that you can see what I'm doing, which you should be able to. I'm gonna take some of that green. Let me kind of wet this, this first panel a little bit. I lied, let me wet the whole thing a little bit. And I just wanna kind of touch. Because I just wanna tiny bit of color, but give me a second and I'll show you what I'm going to do to it. Because I can always add more later, but I cannot take it away. Okay, so I'm going to wet my brush, kind of clean it out a little bit, and I'm just going to take that color and kind of wash it out a little bit. I want to mix it a little bit with the blue and let it kind of flow a little bit more that away. Add water to my brush as necessary. Not too much, you don't wanna go crazy. Okay, like so. I still want it to look kind of like haphazardly random, purposeful random, right? I love this paper, oh my gosh. Now I know why it was so cost, so spendy. Nice, nice, nice.
just kind of put another wash of color in there. See what I mean? It's pretty. I think it's pretty. Let's see if these guys down here have blended out too much. Because remember, I can always add more, but I can't take away. I think it's subtle, but I think it's really pretty. I don't know, it adds like a lot of interest to what we are trying to do here. Let's see, and I want a little bit more green down here. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water with my clean brush. I'm gonna dip into the green one more time, just the tip, and I want to kind of, not too heavy handedly, drop some color, go back into my water, so I clean my brush, and just kind of change the value of this blue and green down here so they they look like they go it makes me happy so you have like light and dark and dog hair <laughs> so all different kinds of blues and greens in here now i'm gonna let this completely dry so i am going to step away i'm gonna do something real quick now, this might be a mistake but i'm gonna do it because um, i don't like that there's this kind of straightish line here and this straightish line there I want to kind of just pull it up a little bit and mush it down. I want to make sure that this line is all the way across messy. Even though I know that you may not see hardly any of this when it's all done. But now I have something that unifies the entire layout. So all six of my panels all will go together. They'll all complement each other because not only am I using the same thematic background through the whole thing. I'm also going to use the same, I mean, all of the images. I'm going to use all the papers I'm going to use all coordinate really well together. And if you get stuck with that, you know how to do that, how to pick out the colors, how to pick out the different patterns and whatnot. Think about an outfit that you'd wear during the day. Like maybe, maybe this is a lot of color for you, but maybe you might wear, you know, you might wear black slacks and you would wear a gorgeous pink top and maybe you'd find a nice green sweater to go with it and maybe you have a piece of jewelry that kind of has a few of those colors in there and they all kind of tie together so they don't have to match exactly they just all coordinate they all complement each other so that's generally how I look at those types of things now while this is drying I'm gonna go through my stash again and I'm going to pick out some um, more elements to bring more to the focal point like um, things like my veneer shapes or my actual shape um, die cuts, those types of things. So I'll be back when this is dry and I will have gone through my stash and picked out some more goodies to play with. <laughs> okay, so this is mostly dry. I have pulled out some goodies up above. I still really wasn't sure what I was going to do to like decorate this whole sheet of paper. In all honesty, I was pretty daunted by the whole idea of doing it, but I just came up with something while I was waiting for this to dry, and I kind of wrote out some notes on what things I could do, and what I want to do is, if you see this little squiggly line right here, I would like to take a pencil and very lightly create this squiggly line that goes along the whole thing, kind of following the flow of the, the watercolor that I put down. I basically want to write my friend a love letter to herself. Something that will help her remember that no matter what she's going through, everything's gonna be okay. So I kind of wrote out an idea of what I wanna do and I'm gonna do it in my own handwriting. So I need to take myself off camera. So I take the pressure off myself cause I'm a little paranoid about writing this while all of you are watching. I hope you understand that and I hope that's okay. Um, I will make sure to post on my website, beautifulcreatives.com, exactly what my letter to her says. So if you would like to go check that out, please feel free to go to beautifulcreatives.com and that information will be there. Then my idea is if I write her her little love letter down the center of her blessings book, then she will have the ability to open it up and actually see the entire blessing that I'm because that's, that's essentially what I'm trying to do, is I'm trying to bless her from afar by telling her words of encouragement and love and support, even though I'm far away from her. 
So that is the idea at the moment. I'm just going to draw a squiggly line with pencil. I can do that in front of you. I think that's okay. I did do a little tester on this one. So when I first tested it out, I wrote it in pen and then I wrote on the line. That worked out great, but then I needed to make sure that the pen I was using wasn't going to smudge if I wrote it in pencil. If I drew the line in pencil, wrote my sentiment in pen, let it dry, and then erase over the top of it. That is what this is here, and the line erased beautifully. So I'm hoping that it will work well on the watercolor paper. I don't know. This is just regular printer paper. This is water paper, watercolor paper. I'm not sure how it's gonna work, but I'm going to give it a, a good whirly gig. The pen that I'm using, in case you're curious, is a big pen. Again, I apologize. It's just a pen that I've had for a really long time. I got it from the hospital I used to work with. I love this pen a lot. I think a comparable pen would be something like uh, a Pilot Multiball, Multiball pen like that, or even something, oh, that's the exact same pen. Sheesh, that's not helpful or really any kind of pen that you want. So just, I would recommend if you do this, test your pen the same way I did it here, by drawing your pencil line first, write your sentiment on that line, or even portion of your sentiment on that line, let it dry, and then try erasing it, and see if you can get the pencil mark to go away, while also making sure the ink doesn't smear. So, before I go to write my sentiment, I'm going to just take a moment, and there's a part of me that thinks I'm gonna start at the very beginning and just kind of go, but there's also a part of me that really wants this to be a cover. So it might say something like, in case no one told you today, which I might do in stamps, and then my letter would start here. That's, yeah, I think that's what I'll do. And then I'll decorate around my sentiment. Okay, so there's no right or wrong way to do this. I'm gonna actually redraw that there. Kind of got lost a little bit over the bump, but I'm gonna write my little love letter to her there. So when I come back, you'll see that that is completely done and I will have erased that pencil line. So hopefully this works out well. And if it doesn't, you know I will be coming back to tell you. If it doesn't work well, then we will work out a way to fix it together. So. More to come, I'll be right back. Okay, I won't lie, that was scary. <laughs> so I wrote my sentiment, the whole thing. I wrote the front in my handwriting and I wrote the inside in my handwriting as well. I found the front was harder than the inside because of the wavy line made it seem very easy. I try to keep everything very loopy because that's how my handwriting is generally. Um, but because I knew I was doing this for someone else and I don't really like my handwriting so much, I was actually really worried about doing this. So I was kind of like, getting up tight, so I had to like take a deep breath and exhale and just get loopy again. Take a deep breath, exhale and get loopy again. And that seemed to help. There's a couple of peaks, but I'm okay with that. It's, it is handmade, it's something I'm making for her myself. And I was, I took uh, my Staedtler's uh, Mars plastic eraser, which um, I don't know if a lot of people like them because they have a lot of like eraser dust. I don't personally mind that, I find that it takes pencil marks off very cleanly and I just use a very light hand and it didn't seem to do any damage to the paper at all. And the pencil is completely gone. You can't tell that um, there was ever a line there in the first place and also the ink did not smudge. So I'm gonna take just a quick moment. I did write some lines on my front page just to make sure that it all kind of lined up. I still haven't decided if I'm done like going over this letters on the front page. Or maybe I'll just leave it like it is, who knows. I don't like the front page as much, the handwriting on the front page as much as I do the handwriting on the inside. So that is done. So I guess theoretically I could like fold this up and tie it with a really pretty string and call it good and then just find an envelope for it. Or I could actually put my, my little um, decorative elements on here like I had in mind originally. Um, I'm gonna just kind of lay some things out and kind of see how it feels. Um, I don't really like, I don't know. 
I, I was saying to myself, I don't really like the sentiments now that I've got these here, but that might not be true. Like, it might be just trickier to put them on. Okay, so I think I sort of have a start of a layout done, although I don't feel like it's like done, done. And I still don't know if I like this little flower doohickey majiggy over here. So um, I am going to cut some of these these um, mandalas out. I'm gonna fussy cut them. And I am actually going to walk away for a little while and I will be back because I think I've gotten myself a little bit stuck. And hopefully you can relate. I'm sure that there's a lot of you out there who've done the same thing. I really feel like I'm close to sort of what I wanna do, but I don't really know yet. All right, so after a break, I am now back and I am ready to get started again. I did fussy cut my mandalas out and I even cut an extra one out so that way I, my plan at this point is I'm gonna use part of it down on the edge here and then I'm gonna use the rest on the front cover somewhere. So it kind of, that, that design kind of flows through. Um, I also made this little guy over here work to my liking and I did that by roughing up the um, one edge with a pair of scissors because this side is smoother than this side on the watercolor paper and on this side because this watercolor paper has kind of a deckle edge to it I created a torn edge to mimic that down along the bottom of my little flowers and so now I like it it seems to be working so my job now is to like finalize my decisions and get these things tacked down okay so I feel like it's lacking something I'm looking at it straight on at the moment. I really hate the cover. The back, I'm mostly gonna leave blank, so I'm not too worried about that. I love the idea that you could stand this card up on a table or something. Your blessings book. Carry it with you, pop it in your, your bag. It might be a little large for that, but I don't know, it's kind of cool. Okay, let's let's worry about the inside in a few minutes. Let's see if I can get the cover. I'm giving it a good push, not sliding it at all. I'm trying really hard to make sure all of the bits kind of get pushed down. Here we go, ready? Oh, you know what? That's kind of cool! Yay! Okay, so I'm not a complete stamping failure. Isn't she pretty? She's pretty. I love her. Love her. Love the stamp. Gonna have to use her more often. And she came out really nice and crisp. Okay, so I am ready. I basically just cut off all of the excess watercolor paper so that I feel like I'm working more with just the image that I will be coloring. I also have turned to the back of my Blessings book um, because I think this has all the colors in it that I want to use for her there.
think my girl is done. I think she's done. Let me zoom out a little bit. Get some stuff moved out of the way. But this is what I've been using for color reference. This is the front page. I think that looks really good. I like the way that what wasn't making sense to me, like the colors weren't making sense to me, but now that um, that front image is finished, feels like she belongs. Which makes me, which makes me very happy. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just lop her off but I want to keep as much of her hair as possible because I think her blue hair is so cool. So cool. I love it. I'm allowed to say that. I love my own art. You're allowed to love your own art. Which, after as long as it took me to get to this point where I did, I, where I could say that I loved it, that's something. Now, I'm cutting off one of my little bubbles over here because I'm thinking that they're simple enough I could redraw them if I need to which means I can crop closer to her like that. And I chopped off three little bubbles over here. I do like that. And I can redraw those little bubbles. And because I cropped her a little bit shorter, not only do I have room to do bubbles, I can see the blue and green really nicely, which I love, and I still have a space to put a sentiment down. So that makes me super jazzed. Before I change my mind, I'm going to get my, I'm gonna use my ta Aliens Tacky Glue to, to glue that down because it's pretty thick. I'm just gonna kinda hold that for a second or so, or 10 or 20. I just really wanna make sure she's put down on my page. The other thing that I was thinking about doing as I was coloring her in is these little bubbles. I can repeat that little bubble all through the whole blessing book and then it will look like the color that has been bugging me, this reddish color that has really been bothering me that hasn't really flowed through the whole thing will then flow through the whole thing. So I'm going to do that for sure. I just really want this to be something that she can cherish. So I'm gonna take my white doodling pen, if I can find it, and I'm going to do some of those little bubbly designs. Now, shadow, I used um, Prisma Color Premier, a Premier Prisma Color Sepia. And for my highlight, I used my Unibroad Sigma, Signo White Pen. So I'm going to do the same thing. And I do my shadow in the lower right hand corner. It didn't really matter. I just wanted to pick a corner and like do it for all of them the same. Okay, now for the highlight. Let me pause just a minute. I wanna get my sentiment down so at least that's done. And then anything else I'm doing is just doodling and decorating and I put it, because, blah, 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 because I think I am pretty close to done. Um, this is what it looks like so far. I absolutely love her. I'm gonna tie her closed with some twine. But let me, I'll be right back. Blah, 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 I'll be right back. Okay, so I printed that out. Um, chose my font, made the size I wanted. I'm going to cut it out using my paper kata because mama can't cut a straight line if her life depends on it. And you don't even know how bad that drives me bananas, but. Okay, so I've got my little sentiment not only cut out, but cut out into individual words, okay? So I've got my glue pad. I've got my words all cut out, thinking I can kind of like put them, not haphazardly, but, you know, if I hate this, I can always like print it back out again and print and and just paste it down in one soup. But that's generally not my style. It's not how I normally do. 
my words because I like to make space for doodling on them. But I'm not sure I'm too keen on this. Oh, why do you have to be so difficult? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm trying to like center it a little bit better. In case no one told you today. You know what? We're gonna stop piddly farting around, which is what I do when I get too much in my head. And I'm gonna clamp these closed using some office clamps. And I'm just gonna glue it down and pray for sunshine. <gasps> First, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do two doodles around here. The first I'm gonna do with the fine tip of the coral distress marker, which is the same marker we've been using to do all of the little bubbles. And then I'm gonna go over the top of that with my white Signo pen. Both, both pens I'm gonna use very scribbly. Almost done. I want to do one more thing. With my white pen, did some X's and O's all over it, kisses and hugs. I think I am done. Yeah. Okay, so that's it for the decorating part. Now I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna cut myself a piece of twine, black and white, because it's my faves. And I'm gonna cut a little bit more than I think I'm gonna need. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is put my twine behind my project going to match the ends up and kind of, you know, you know how scientific I am, kind of make them even. Cross them at the back, flip it over, come to the front, and I'm going to try and tie a bow. There we go. Now I'm just going to pop it into a puffy envelope and I'm going to ship that off to her and she has her very own blessing book. I hope that you enjoyed this terribly long video. I apologize for it being so long, um, but I appreciate you hanging out with me um, in my art studio today. I always love playing and creating and having fun, and I thought this was something that I thought would be super fun to do. I've never done it before, and I definitely will be doing it again. So until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.